demonstrating you know, the real displays later, but there's something else that we have. We have something else called an internal audience. You have an internal audience. You have the imagination inside your head that other people are watching you. And that those other people inside your head that are watching you, that those people are going to give you feedback about your rehearsals. Because you have to rehearse, you have to practice in order to get complex displays to be able to be competitive with respect to the marketplace. So you have to have an internal audience. You don't have to, but it turns out that human beings evolved an internal audience. They evolved an internal audience. This has gone by many uh, descriptions across the history of philosophy. This is what the psychologists now are chasing around in your, their head called the self. They don't know what they're talking about. This is also has gone by the nature of self-consciousness. This is also that philosophers and neuroscientists have called this consciousness. Everybody is just twisted up because they cannot understand what the nature of consciousness is and how it works, why we have it. It's actually pretty simple. It's an internal audience. It's a virtual reality mechanism that's been built inside of human psychology for one purpose and one purpose only. It's a feedback mechanism to tell you how it is that the real people will probably look at you when they watch your display. Okay? Now just think about this. You clean up your house and you look back and look at it. What do you see in that house? Through? You're seeing it through the eyes of other people who are now looking at your house. That's what you're looking at. And you will feel pride when you look at that. Okay? You will feel happiness, confidence, and pride because your display now looks good and you are ready for the real people out here to observe your display. Okay? And so you'll go, oh no, that chair, let's see. Ah, that looks better. Okay? You, what you just did is you were looking at your display through the eyes of other people. That's what you did. Those eyes of other people are, in fact, your internal imaginary audience. And it's watching you almost all the time. Okay? The, uh, that internal audience it is not always watching you, but it's never far away from you. It's always right there. At most, it's dozing on your shoulder, waiting to watch you again. Now, the, um, that internal audience will give you feedback about your display. Okay? So Ben Hogan, the great golfer, the, uh, was working very, very hard to have this perfect mechanical golf swing. And he hit, uh, he was working very hard at this, and he, he uh, smothered a couple of hooks, and he literally went home and was deeply depressed. He could not understand how that happened, and what is it that he's thinking? He's thinking that he's going to embarrass himself at the U.S. Open because that shot's going to come out of nowhere and it's going to indicate that he must have mutation loads inside of his nervous system, inside of his brain, that are indicating genetic flaws worse than some of his competitors who he's trying to compete with to get to the top of the world dominance hierarchy and display that he's got the best genes to make with. See what I'm saying? And so in despair, despite as hard of work as he could, he was having trouble. So that's what's going on inside the nervous system. Now, he worked it out, one big shot. That's why we talked about him six years later. Now, the thing is, is that what does he have? An imaginary audience. Because if it isn't an imaginary audience that you're caring about, why on earth would you care if you put the shot in the trees? In practice, where nobody saw it. You saw it. Okay? You saw it. That's why he had that reaction. Because that... Your rehearsal is there for a reason. It's getting ready for the real game. So when you go to the store and you put on a new sweater, you look in the mirror. If it makes you look better than you usually look, then you feel happy and more confident and more valued and more attractive. Nobody's around. Nobody's giving you that feedback, but you're giving it to yourself. This is a self-esteem mechanism. This is what self-esteem is. Self-esteem can 
impact the esteem of you. Okay? Other feedback from other people can also impact the esteem of you. It's the same mechanism inside the brain, but it's sensitive to two different kinds of inputs. It's sensitive to inputs from the outside, which it better be. Every animal in nature is sensitive to inputs from the outside. But human beings have evolved something extraordinary, which is an internal audience, what we call self or self-consciousness. This is what it is. It's an internal audience, and you can just see it. Every guy that ever went up to hit on a girl always is thinking, what should I say? Let me think what I should say. And he's playing it out in his head. Okay? He's using his own internal machinery to anticipate what her feedback is going to be about that. That's what he's doing. And when he comes up with a line that seems like it's really good, he feels more confident and excited. Okay? And it in increases his motivation to take a shot at it. If he can't come up with anything, he just doesn't do it. As Bill says, like that. Okay? You just walk away because you couldn't come up with anything. All right? So we're constantly using the internal mechanism, and I believe that it probably started a million years ago with some guy trying to hit on a gal, and he's, there, you have the dawn of language. As the guys start describing things and trying to say things that are funny or witty or interesting, or try to display some of their characteristics that would be good for mating, like, oh, look at the, look at the poor little wolf, poor little thing. Well, now, why would they have that feeling, and why would they have that thought, and why would they describe that? The answer would be that would indicate that they might be a pair bonder that has a soft spot in its heart for little friends. See what I'm saying? Got it? It starts to indicate that you have pair bond psychology and that you're going to stick around when little kids come out. Whereas prior to that, they didn't stick around. So you start to indicate that you're a nervous system built around oxytocin and attachment, and so you start to describe those things. Okay? So you can also, uh, 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 you know, all, all these kinds of characteristics become part of the display. So now this is why it is that we have people do everything we do. So they join Greenpeace. They meditate at the top of the mountain in Tibet. Okay? They protest this. They, they sit in a room quietly for three years and don't say anything to anybody. There was some, some uh, Buddhist monk traveled on the road from Los Angeles to San Francisco with his guitar, and it took him two years. Now, we're supposed to believe that there was no, you know, that there was no reason for this other than just the experience. Really? That guy's been seeking the balcony for the last 10 years telling that story. See what I'm saying? He's telling a story. He's telling a story behind this. He's trying to display extraordinary characteristics that ultimately say, mate with me, I have good genes. That's what it is. Okay. This is human nature. The solution to uh, the, the, the mysteries of the ages about people are very confused about self-esteem. This is why people say, well, you shouldn't really care what other people think. Really? You shouldn't care what other people think? Are you out of your mind? These are the three relationships that you're seeking. You have to be extraordinarily concerned with what other people think. And you are. Okay? If you are not concerned with what other people think, then you have a really bizarre autistic chip, and you're just shoving Twinkies in your mouth right in the, right in the middle of some social situation, and you're, you're you know, just, just peeing on the floor because it's a comfortable time for you to do that. You have to be concerned about what other people think, and you're extraordinarily concerned about it. Okay? Now, should you be so concerned that you try to cheat and deceive people as to who it is that you are and what it is that you can do. Nah, that's not so good. Because when we do that, it turns out that the internal audience knows that you're a fake. Okay? That puts you in an uncomfortable position there. It's not good. You know it's not sustainable. Stone Age Village, this all gets worked out. Everybody finds out who's good at what. You can't, you can't hide the truth for very long. You can do it for a little bit, but you, pretty soon this is going to get worked out. So human beings actually have an internal, honest mechanism called self-esteem mechanism. Okay? And it will feel good when you are doing things well in advance of what anybody else does. Now, this is actually one of the interesting problems with respect to health behavior. Because uh, people seek, for example, to lose weight. They seek to lose weight for one reason. They want to impact the judgments of other people. That's why it is that they're doing it. 
Now, the thing is, the problem is, when you start on the road to try to lose weight by being more diligent about, about your behavior, the feedback is nowhere. You're not going to get any feedback from these people because they can't tell the difference. So if you go six days and you do a really good job, nobody can see anything and nobody's going to give you any feedback. Okay? So the, 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 the place to, to go, and incidentally, your self-esteem mechanism, as you start to do this, it doesn't trust you because you've gone down this road 40 times and haven't pulled it together. So it's not giving you any real particularly positive feedback either. It's saying, ah, I don't really trust you. I don't believe it. Okay? This, these, these are not stupid people. They're right inside you. They know all about you. Okay? Now, what the, what the trick is and what people don't know is that they believe that this thing that they call self-esteem, which is really esteem, not self-esteem, is really the thing that they seek. They seek to have a good impression on, for example, potential mates. So Joni's got a weight problem. She is seeking to have a good impact on Horace. That's her goal. That's the biological purpose of this behavior. That is what she wants. Okay? So she doesn't think that she's going to feel, quote, good about herself until she gets to a point where she gets that feedback from him. That's what she's imagining inside of her imagination as she seeks to chain behavior to a future goal. That's what she's seeking. I'm worried about next summer and being on the beach with a bikini. That's what I'm worried about. Why? Because other people are watching and judging me. That's why. And they're making competitive judgments. That's why. Okay? So what she's seeking here is esteem. But the truth of the matter is, is that she will get self-esteem much faster than she will get esteem. Much faster. But she has to earn it. Okay? If she goes two or three weeks, a chain of behavior, and she loses five pounds in three weeks through a chain of 21 days of excellent behavior, what's interesting is that the self-esteem mechanism is designed by nature to be working on giving you feedback about your rehearsals in advance of the real show. And so as a result, self-esteem will rise. And it will rise dramatically. And it will rise very, very quickly. It just won't rise today, and it won't rise by looking in the mirror and saying, well, I'm just as good as I am. Uh-uh. You know you're not just as good as you are, as you could be. You know that with diligent effort, you can improve your competitive position. And so you are designed by nature with competitive scrutiny on the inside and on the outside to look at your competition in the world and to be anxious and nervous about that competition and to be forcing you into trying to make as good a display as you can make. You're designed that way. You can't step around that. Okay? The, uh, you cannot get to self-esteem by any trick mechanism. You get to self-esteem through one pathway, and that is impressing the internal audience. If you impress the internal audience with your diligence, I guarantee you that your self-esteem will rise. I don't just suggest that it will. I don't just hope that it will. I guarantee it. Because that's the nature of how this thing is perfect. Okay? But I cannot tell you that you will get esteem from the outside world because I can't believe they'll value it. If you're a young Vincent Van Gogh right now, and you have something extraordinary to do in the art world, I can't guarantee you that in your lifetime anybody will care. But if you care, because you have done it to the best of your ability and you think it's extraordinary, you may have self-esteem, but you may not have other esteem, and you will have dissonance and problems around that, but you will have that. That I guarantee. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes? Uh, a narcissistic person... 